What's good to YouTube and welcome to the house. We've got not just one, not just two, but 12 days of deals on eBay and here in day three we've got 10% off of everything. I've seen better coupons on eBay such as 15% off of everything but this is pretty darn good. This is if you live in the US of A, Canada, Latin America or the Caribbean you're eligible for this coupon. Not sure how many Caribbeans we got in the comments section. Represent down below if you happen to be living that life. But it's a maximum value of a hundred dollar discount, so you'd have to be spending a thousand. But I'm not gonna judge what you're spending on. Godzilla figures get pretty expensive, boys. Yu-Gi-Oh cards themselves, as we're gonna take a look at the collector's market, get pretty expensive. And of course, things like cell phones and gifts for Christmas. It's a pretty good opportunity overall. Let's go ahead and look at the cards on today's market watch. We've got Gel and Duo, and something I've noticed that's a little weird is that we have. No listings for a near mint unlimited on eBay. We do have the only first edition on all the market at $25. And we come down over here. Core TCG, coming in as the hero, has 30 quantities of these, forcing other people to list lower should they want to sell or list near the same. And you're hoping that people choose you over a highly rated vendor. We come over here. Second page is still unlimited near mint. No first editions at all. Hugging the $10 mark versus disappearing on the market for a collectible Strike of Neo secret rare that's involved in an FDK. That's kind of the meme that has pushed it right here. It's nice to see that kind of stable surgeons thanks to a vendor on the market. But if you're a collector, consider it sooner than later because even that kind of quantity can disappear. There's a meme FDK where basically you use Red Eyes, Flare, Metal Dragon, you burn over and over and over as Gel and Duo tries to activate but has its like effect negated. So you're able to FDK through that and it's pretty cool. I don't think it'll become meta though. But as a collector, decide sooner than later. And again, I imagine as a collector, you want that first edition stamp, but it is not readily available in playset. So do consider that while shopping. The Phantom Knights of good old Rusty is at 265 on TCG Player and has been slowly going back up. I, I knew that something in Legendary decks eventually had to be money, and this is going to be my call to be it because it's a brand new link and it's seeing play in the meta. Basically, it's used in Rongo Turbo and many other trees that you go up through link summoning when you play the phantom knight engine it's only two dollars and ten cents still on ebay but it quickly jumps towards three i definitely get mine sooner than later as you see there's only 22 different sellers here on tcg player and there's only 29 results when you look on ebay and it quickly goes up so people are waiting for this and the value ones are going completely off the market you want to play meta maybe later on in the year and you don't know what the meta will be, I would have this because I, I have a feeling the Phantom Knight engine in the first place isn't going to go away, and Cherubini could easily pop this on up even further, depending on how that deck plans to play out their turns. Bamboozled. It's gone up even further than I expected. I was telling you guys around the $16 mark, I'd consider it sooner than later, but again, it could have eyes on it for a future forbidden and limited list as we see towards february we should be getting a new one it's actually the no sooner than it expires i think january 21st so on both platforms we see it above that 24 dollar mark people are scrambling to get theirs but again i don't think we have a usa listed event where we're sure rongo bongo is going to be popping off and we've seen in the past the enabler get hit, such as for SEO, rather than the power card like Rongo Bongo. So Rongo wasn't too much of an issue before this card, and even the six Amri decks were using this card to make Rongo. Should be interesting to see how Konami adapts during the next FNL list. But if you got your sooner than later, you got a pretty good price for it. We'll see where it goes uh, with Konami. XC's Encore. Probably the best way to stop Rongo Bongo since we're on the topic. Yes, this does affect it. Yes, it can uh, take the materials off because it's affecting the materials, not the card. So, everybody's been arguing about this versus, I think, Herald of the Abyss. And this is better because we go back into the meta. If you're playing Herald of the Abyss, I think that's the right name for the card. Then, uh, this is usually on the field where they'll have ways of the, to bring back stuff with the Phantom Knights. And they'll have a Dark Warrior to get rid of instead of Rongo. So, 
XE's Encore seems to be the way that people have adjusted to dealing with Rongo. It's gone up in price on both platforms, but come back down faster on TCG Player than eBay. Let's get into an in-depth look at the collector's market. It's been a while and I actually had a specific comment saying that I wish you looked at more collector's cards like you used to. I wish you looked over and talked about it more. And one reason I don't so much is it's absurd. It's actually just crazy because there's such a low quantity of these cards that the price is once featured, I feel like A, encourages it a little, but B, it'll happen with or without Market Watch, which is why I've let it stirred so long. I wanted to prove that Market Watch isn't necessarily the focus of why these cards go, and we see Metamorphosis here at a $210 mark. Freaking crazy. And uh, that's, the if you're getting a near mint, it's pretty much that, like, it's pretty insane to see the collector's mark develop over months of not being fe featured on Market Watch. We have Nimble Mamanga at the $20 mark. I think last time I featured it went from 6 to 12 or something like that. And I thought that was crazy. It has my favorite color in the background. And this isn't really in any meta or a card that was featured through metas, yet it goes up like that. Magical Stone Excavation here is towards 60 freaking dollars. And we come over here and look for near mint. So, well, that's light play. That is not near mint. Don't, don't put both together in a listing. We keep going. We keep looking. We see $125, and it doesn't really still say near mint. Ah, condition used. Interesting. It looks pretty good in the listing, but they still put used for their own description of it. So... It's just the quantity of cards is so low versus the prestige of what they were and they continuously get bought out and there's no replacing these quantities because there's not going to be a way to. And so the market's going to continue to climb at this ridiculous pace for collector's cards like this. Actually, somebody messaged me about Smashing Ground. They're like, I bought out all the Smashing Grounds. It's a great buyout. You should feature it on Market Watch. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll feature it. I'm going to say it was stupid because they were talking about GOAT format with it and hyping it for GOATs, but I feel like... Like, it got really popular around Monarch format because being able to take the 2400 bodies off board and then act like summon your own Monarch hit that Solace hit their hand and really weaken them was the strength of Smashing Ground. And yeah, it was one of the first ever expensive commons. It stayed off of eBay so far, but we've actually seen a recoup back downwards as sellers quickly put theirs out for the being sold on the market. You, Whenever you buy out CP cards... Even though there's not many quantities to replace, you're going to have to buy it out again and again and again and again to make that happen. And sometimes people will jump on a card such as for GOAT format, but in this case, I think you're fighting a war that will take a very long time to force something to go up. Versus something like Sakuretsu that was actively played in GOATs, even as a one of, you see this way up above market price towards 60 freaking dollars. Realistically, when you're looking for these cards, you either have to find a deal in person or wait online and snipe the newer auctions that come up on ebay because tcg player is rarely going to have the deals on these look at old vindictive magician a card that was basically used in apprentice magician and goat almost 30 dollars quickly could be 30 dollars it's just insanity to me versus the market price of what was 14 dollars so the sales rate can't be insane on this right like when the market prices are so settled versus the price is going up so much it's more like it sold out to an extent. Dust Shoot, a card actively played in multiple formats. $53, but again, people don't remember. Champion Pack 5 had foil edging problems, which is why cards like this and Magical Merchant are so hard to find in the, the near mint quantities. And Magical Merchant pretty much entirely off the table if you're looking for a near mint. Oh, from the Netherlands, almost 70 freaking dollars. So again, this is why I cover it less. I wanted to see where it would develop without Market Watch, if it would be the same insanity, and it clearly is, without like featuring these consistently to a large audience that's already considering them, the market has developed and continued its madness and continued its way up. Like Great Keeper Spy, I thought this would fall back towards 30, undoubtedly, as it got hyped from a meta quote-unquote standpoint of new releases, new legacy support for Grave Keepers, yet we still see this towards 60 freaking dollars for the lowest. And that's that's crazy to me. Even though this could be played in goats, was played in monarch format. Uh, it's it's crazy to think that this card is holding above sixty dollars for me. So that's just where it's developed over time. So it makes me question if 
featuring something like Hydrogenon. Is Hydrogenon suddenly going to get slurped? This was played in fast formats. It's a very good card, and uh, uh, there's so many under $10 because almost every champion pack card seems to get you know, slurped up, and that's kind of my conflict with featuring something like, hey guys, look, Hydrogenon's cheap compared to everything, it used to be cool, yeah, you were able to attack and summon, you know, it, that's, that's kind of a little bit of a problem, isn't it, when, versus talking about what's already happened, but if I'm not showing the deals, then I'm failing my audience too, it's just this constant back and forth in my head, like, yo, what do I do, and uh, the answer kind of played out in front of me as I kept collector's cards more so off of Market Watch to see how it settled and just continue developing as it was so what do you guys think would you like to see more collector's cards again ultimate rares crazy stuff older stuff like this and actually talk about why i think specific ones are receiving their buyouts like how the guy that told me he bought out smashing ground and bragged about it like i i didn't think that was a good idea you're, you're in for a long war of attrition and uh what do you guys think about the more you know relevant stuff slash suggestions let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Support me on Patreon if you aren't already and you enjoy the content. You guys allow me to continue what I love to do every single day, and that's bring you Yu-Gi-Oh! content, such as the short news video this morning on Jump Promos. Check that out if you haven't already. Oh, also big news, Jump Promos are ending. These are the last four Jump Promos, so that's an interesting conversation in and of itself. Check it out if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed the discussion, and subscribe if you haven't already.